Hey, I'm Rene Ritchie. Welcome back to the show. I asked you for your questions. I have Georgia Dow here to be the vassal of the channel, the avatar for all of them. Hey, Georgia. Hey. Let's go. Alexander Fusta asks, what do you do to prevent notification? <laughs> here we go, Rene. Let's ask you this question. Um, what do you do to prevent notification overload? Uh, how has iOS 12 helped with taming them? And uh, I have seen iOS 12 cut down on the total amount of notifications, uh, but that still doesn't deal with them lingering on the screen. So I have a really smart friend uh, named Georgia Dow who's helped me a lot with this. But what I did first was I just turned off all, it's sort of like your theory about when you want to clean out something, you can't just take out the things you don't want. You have to take out everything and only put back the things that you do want. So what I did is like a digital notification cleansing because the idea of notifications is good, but when they're in volume, they're really interruptions. And if you had somebody going, hey, ping, hey, ping, 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 hey, ping, 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 coming out of your pocket or, or bag or something all the time, it, it's maddening. So I turned them all off and then I slowly and carefully added back things that I just couldn't miss. So for example, um, messages because I have family and friends who really do need to reach me critically. So I have to leave that on, even though Apple gives me no VIP functionality for that. None, none, keep asking, nothing. And I also have VIP turned on for mail and I have direct messages, but very, very few things can actually make my phone beep or buzz. Uh, and then everything else uh, with iOS 12 specifically, they have this new silent notification that goes straight to notification center and totally bypasses a lock screen so I never see them. And if I want to, I can go to notification center and find them, but I never want to. So like once in a while I'll remember and go through there, but I'm not OCD about cleaning out uh, my notification center. So they can just live there and fight amongst themselves for, for attention. Umarali asks a very important question okay. that everyone wants to know, Kirk or Picard? So Kirk over Picard because Kirk but next generation over the original series. Maybe a Deep Space Nine. Arawako asks, which Google Assistant voice do you like most? I'm a fan of green, but blue and pink have their charm as well. So real talk time, I can't use Google Assistant. Every time I buy the new Android phone, and by the new Android phone, I mean the Google one. So like I buy every, previously I bought the Nexus, now I buy the Pixels every year. I wanna try them out. I go to turn on Google Assistant and it says, can we track your app and web usage? And I say no. And then it says you can't use Google Assistant, which I feel is bullshit because they could easily not give me the things that require that, but still tell me the weather. They don't need to know my app or, or web usage to tell me the weather or like to set an alarm, but they, in exchange for providing that free service, they want my data, fair enough. I'm not willing to provide it, so I'm not allowed to use it. What Siri voice do you use? So brand new in iOS 12, there's a South African and an Irish accent. And I thought I'd like the South African accent, because I, I came from South Africa and I thought it'd be great for years and years to be able to listen to my own accent. But it turns out that it's so subtle, I, don't even, I can't even tell. So I switched, it's probably only just so subtle for you. Maybe, but I switched to Irish because then it sounds like Friday from, from uh, the Avengers and it's awesome. There's the rest of the vibranium. Okay, here we go. Crackberry Kevin asks, <gasps> Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, still your best martial art to learn first in your opinion? And which martial art would you recommend to learn and in what order? So I did Judo as a kid in like in elementary school then I did karate in high school. I did mainland Chinese Wing Chun in college, and then I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu after college. And I think if I had to do it all over again, or you know, for my kids one day, I'll do Judo first, because I think knowing how to throw somebody is super important, and that's the most intense throwing, like Judo and wrestling. I think that's awesome to learn that stuff really young. And, um, and then I would, you know, in the high school age, I would probably do like Muay Thai, uh, because the striking arts are you know, really important there. Uh, and Jiu -Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the same time. So I think it's not one martial art anymore. I think if the UFC has shown us anything, it's the ability to move fluidly between combat ranges, all the way from grappling to knees and elbows, to kicks and punches, to short range ballistics. I mean, all of that stuff I think is super important. And the, the better you can flow between them without even thinking about styles anymore, I think the better you are. The combat should be your style. Uh, the thing that separates a lot of the stuff like judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu and wrestling and even like Masada Yub stress fire is that they're geared towards performance under pressure. And if you can perform under pressure, that's the key. Like if you're sitting around doing kata or anything like that, that's just a dance, complete waste of your time. If you want to actually apply this stuff, you've got to be applying this stuff. It's like, it's cliche, but you cannot swim. They cannot learn to swim on the ground. You've got to get in the pool. Same thing for martial arts. Jeff? J2H asks, for a high school student, what would be better, the MacBook or the MacBook Air? 
I mean, neither of them at this point. The MacBook Air technically, because it has a wider variety of legacy ports and schools are nothing if not legacy port riddled, but it really hasn't been updated significantly for a while. And the MacBook is jokingly called in some Apple circles, the manager book, because you can't do real work on it. It's more like for executives on jets. And it feel, Apple's rumored to be introducing a new generation MacBook Air this September. So if you can possibly wait, if you can hold out at all, I would hold out for this fall and see what Apple has to offer. Because I think the options of then will be way better than the options now. So what do they do now? If you can't wait, MacBook Air, um, but it's just so outdated. Mac Fixer and A asks, native New Yorker here, are the bagels in Montreal as bad as Twitter says? I can understand how this is confusing for New Yorkers because what they call bagels aren't really bagels. They're sort of like round bread, where in Montreal we have actual bagels. I mean, all of them are way better than West Coast bagels, which aren't even bread, I think. But New York handily wins on pizza. Sorry, Chicago. Sorry. Uh, but Montreal just slays on bagels. And you know that because there is a New York company that drives all the way down to Montreal every day to get fresh Montreal bagels and drives back and there's, there's no Montreal company driving to New York for bagels. Oh, well, I'm going to get some Twitter hate from that. Bring it. Come at me. Come at me. Nathan B. Lawrence asks, how do you write so much so effectively? And what personal habits enable this? So I write about a million words a year, and that sounds like a lot. Like I maybe I could have a novel career if that's I actually a put, that's a lot. But it's spread over thousands of articles. And for me, the thing is, I know what I'm writing about. They always say to write about what you know, and I'm lucky that I get to write about what I know. And so I I have an opinion on something, and it's mostly just a matter of getting it out. It's like it's painful for me not to write because it feels like it's stuck in my head. And then when I work, I just focus on getting stuff out of my head and into onto the screen. And that, that seems to work for me. Yeah, but how, how do you do that? That sounds great. Like, I can't get words just out onto you the screen. You do it a lot. And you're terrible at first. And it's terrible. And you just and also I love what I do and that sort of blurs the line so that it's not a, it's not a jobby job for me it's something that I want to do and that's infinitely helpful in terms of motivation. So we should look at some of your first articles to see how oh, bad they were. Don't don't go back. Don't go back. Stalman asks, Have you ever built your own Windows or Linux PC? One of my first jobs was building massive amounts of make your own computers. I think it was for a Xenix installation. I'm really showing sure my age. A Xenix installation for a computer company. And then I, along with a friend of mine, Anthony, we built tons of PCs for gaming and for other stuff over the years. So yeah, tons, tons of them, so many. Cursadilla asks, how does one get started in this business? I feel like just another of the million websites, tweeters, YouTubers. Ah, uh, that's a really good question. I mean, some people will tell you it's luck, but I love this Hoist Gracie saying where the harder I work, the luckier I become. And that sounds trite, but it really is. Like you do, being in the right place at the right time is invaluable. There's no amount of work that can make up for that, but you have to be able to do it once you get the opportunity and that still takes a ton of work. You have to write all the time. You have to write better. You have to consciously, a lot of people say repeat, like repetition, like repetition, do your first thousand or 10,000 articles, but if they're mindless, you don't improve. So I like to think you need conscious repetition where every time you do it, and that's what I've been doing with these videos. I keep like a little journal and I do a video and I pick one thing I want to get better at every time I do and I rewatch a video. And I did that with my writing. I would do an article and then pick one thing I wanted to make better, like with a voice or the way I structured it or the way I introduced it. Just pick one thing and I'd work on it until I felt like I improved at it and then I would pick another goal. It's really hard to write or to record a podcast or to make a video. It's even harder to write or record a podcast or do a video well. And it's even harder to write or record a podcast or do a video every day well. Like the, you could probably count on your fingers how many people do it consistently for long periods of time. We've been trying to hire those people for years and it's really hard to find them. They're super valuable. But you can be, I really believe you can become one of those people just by demanding excellence of yourself and doing amazing work. Like do work that would make you say, Oh damn, oh damn. Oh, damn! That's amazing work and do it over and over again and make it impossible to ignore. Um, and once people see your name once, it's like, okay. They see it again, like, oh, I remember this. They see it a third time, hey. See it a fourth time, it starts to become a thing and then you start to attract audience and you start to grow, people pay attention. So you've gotta, you've gotta bring the awesome and you've gotta bring it consistently. Would you say that there's a certain set of skills that would make you better at being a podcaster or writer in technology? 
So some of it depends on your goal. If you just want to be famous, there's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do to just be famous. If you want to be good though, you really have to know your subject matter and you have to be awesome at it. And that means you have to love what you do because it's, like I said, it's really, really hard to persevere. So you have to be willing to work harder than everybody else, learn more than everybody else and polish yourself better than everybody else. You've just got to have that drive. And it sounds silly, but it really is an indomitable Kaiser Sose level single act of will to do it. And something else you can do, and I mean seriously, is go to Skillshare. Skillshare has tons of videos on all of this stuff, on writing, on video, on audio. And because Skillshare is sponsoring the show, if you sign up now, you can get your first two months for free. And you can just learn as much as you want to learn. Like you can fill your brain up to capacity with this stuff, Georgia. You can be like Neo in the Matrix. Like you'll know writing and video and podcasts kung fu. It's amazing. If you try something, you don't like it, try something else. There's just over 20,000 courses, I think now. It's just one of the best ways to learn wherever you are, whenever you want, however you want. Thank you so much, Skillshare. So if you have questions for me, you can just send them at any time, Twitter or Instagram, just hashtag Ask Renee. Georgia, thank you so much for reading out all those questions so, so wonderfully. <laughs> thank you. And now I'd love to know what you think. So please hit like, please hit subscribe, put all of your answers in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.